Hey guys, and welcome back to our reviewing your. Stay tuned. <laughs> Today we are continuing on our part three of reviewing your cages or enclosures that you've sent us. So we're so excited about this because this is a very educational series. If you haven't seen these before, we go through and we are looking at these videos and pictures for the first time completely blind. We haven't seen them before, just like you. So our reactions are going to be genuine, they're going to be real, but we're going to be judging it on a handful of different things. Number one is the size of the enclosure. We're also going to be taking a look at the bar spacing. Is it too big or too small? Also, cage material. What is your cage even made of? The perching is a big one. Is it all one size or do you have lots of different options for your bird? And number five is food and water bowls. Are you using stainless steel, plastic? How are you going about it? Number six, we're going to be looking at toys and enrichment. Is there enough? Are they high quality or are they potentially triggering hormones? All right, so let's get to Kathy's video. It looks like she has a cockatiel and I can't wait to see her enclosure. Here we go. This is for my cockatiel, Twinkie. Ooh, she has a little bird bath on the outside. A little platform up there, some toys. Lots of toys. More toys. And here's my green cheek on your skills. Hi, baby. You've got two enclosures. Ooh, look at the foraging opportunities there. Cool, well let's start with the cockatiel enclosure if we can just freeze frame it on the cockatiel. So I will say a common theme that I'm seeing through a lot of these is just the variety in perching. I love that people are offering a variety, especially for small birds. I know we've talked about the safety of the cotton rope perches, but as long as you guys are keeping an eye on them and making sure that your bird isn't obsessively destroying them to the point of them fraying, they are a nice soft utilization. Another thing you can do is take your natural perches and wrap them in vet wrap or just use really soft wood. Uh, but I love this. I love that there's a lot of variety in toys and the types of toys and perches and the types of perches. I think again, you guys are doing an amazing job at taking the space that you have and really, really utilizing the entire space and making it so that your bird is most likely to move all around the cage for all those different types of enrichment in different areas. I would say too that if there's ever a point where you feel guilty putting your bird in the cage like it's punishment, look at this like every kid would kill for a room this well decorated with like fun activities so super cool um i i think that you know first glance this bird's incredibly spoiled so my questions then become and and we have a pretty low resolution video of this so unfortunately we can't dive in and get like incredibly crystal clear detail however i see this really cool foraging like almost vines around the outside and i'm wondering if those are plastic and so that's my first concern about this. I think it looks cool and it may not be. They might be actual like real leaves and, and twigs because it did look like Kathy was able to make use of some, some real wood. Like this piece in here looks like some real, some real wood. So, so I don't know. Um, if also, it was plastic, I would just caution against that. And I was going to say there was another point in time where I thought she put like a real bundle of leaves or something that was edible in the conure cage, in the conure right? cage on the far right when you're yeah. looking at the cage. So that looks, oh, maybe it's the same stuff. No, it's different. There's so, both. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to say, I hope it looks real it, by the fact that it's wedged into the bars, but I can't tell. Yeah. I hope it's real. If it's not, then, then that would be a change that I would make. Um, but it, it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. It looks cool. We just cannot tell if it's real or not. Yeah. Anyways, if you guys are curious about any natural foliage and branches and things that you can utilize in your bird's cage, we have some really amazing blog posts and we also have our household dangers download that has a complete list in alphabetical order of what you can use and how to prepare it for your bird's cage. So I think first and foremost, the size for the two species that you have, it's a decent size. There's plenty of room. Um, the bar spacing's right. The cage material, it's, you know, it's not 
chipping away. It's not rusting from what we can see here. It looks like a nice high quality cage. Lots of perching selection. Um, let's dive into the food and water bowls because you noticed the one on the outside. I did. It looked it looks like, like kind I of see a, a couple bowl. down below. There's a pink one and maybe a stainless steel one on the bottom. Which is definitely a way to encourage your bird to use the whole cage by going down below to uh, eat and drink. And it looks like there's something in that corner too, in that far right corner, some sort of platform area. And I couldn't tell if it was like food and water back there. Yeah, so it looks like a nice variety of, of different types of food and water bowls. Um, and just uh, the whole cage setup looks really cool. 10 out of 10 for like the looks. Yeah, and I would say like, and I think it's a common theme that we've been going through is just replacing those plastic uh, unnatural toys with completely natural toys. So I'm gonna go ahead and push birdtrickstoys.com for you guys to kind of make those substitutions. I feel really, really strongly about it because I've seen a lot of really big companies cutting corners with what used to be high quality mm. and amazing materials that they would use and now they're using glues and different um, dyes and stuff that they're just kind of getting away with these cutting corners and I don't believe in it and I don't want to support it. I don't want you guys supporting it either. Our birds deserve better. So if we don't support it, they those companies are forced to do better. So I think that's really important. So getting away from anything unnatural, um, anything plastic or uh, it's hard for us to see because they're... I like bells. Bells are a big one that we like to pull out. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, everything, even some of the colorful things do look natural other than the wiffle balls. Yeah, this is a cool setup. Just, yeah, I'll just echo what Jamie's saying. You know, if it's not natural, start to replace those toys and those items with, with more natural Options. more natural stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I love the fact that I saw a party perch in there. <laughs> yes. So now we're gonna move on to Isabel's submission. She just gave us one single photo to go off of. The cool thing is it's outdoors, mm -hmm. so it's in the sun. And I wanna encourage you guys that want to get your bird that natural sun. It doesn't have to be done in a massive aviary like you see us use. It can just be done in a secondary cage or in their main cage if you can simply wheel it outside for 20 minutes, an hour a day for them to get that natural sunlight is really cool. So I love that this is the first cage we've seen outside. Yeah, so first thing, um, I think I would look at the size of the cage, just given how much stuff is in here, I'd love to see a little bit bigger cage. But that being said, we're always gonna want to see our birds in larger enclosures. So it's, I, I wouldn't say it's a, a zero out of 10 on that, but definitely the bigger the better, um, especially because there's so much stuff in here. And I think it may look a little busier than it is because of just the colorful background. So there might be actually more space inside this enclosure than, than it looks like, if that makes sense. And I will say something again that we've mentioned in other videos is that if this enclosure was wider than it is tall, it would look a lot bigger as well. And the utilization of all of the things inside would look a lot better. So again, when we were looking at like the tiny and small bird enclosures, we were loving that every perch had like a toy cluster by it, but still the cage had all this empty space for the bird to be able to like, fly hopped around and get around like that. And that gets a little bit more complicated as we get bigger uh, into bigger sizes of birds. So this is probably the biggest size we've had so far in our review, uh, subscriber review series. And so now we're dealing with an African gray and things look smaller. I will say that it looks like maybe a blanket or a sheet is on the back of it. And that might just be to utilize, like to offer shade or to offer mm -hmm. coverage since this is outside. If this was inside, I'd be all over that and be like, no, I hope you're not using a cage cover because birds can reach it and chew on fabric and that's the last thing we want. I love that there's a toucan in the cage. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so on to bar spacing. I think that for, if this is exclusively an indoor cage, I don't have an issue with the bar spacing. Something that I would caution you about and just be aware of if this was going to be your birds, like if this bird stays outside in this cage overnight, I would be really concerned about that bar spacing. Um, raccoon hands can get in there real easily with that type of spacing, but that's not to say I assume you keep him outside or her outside um, throughout the evening, but uh, if you did, I would go with a lot smaller bar spacing just for predators. But um, yeah, this is great. And, and again, we don't have the context of like, is this African gray outside all day? If so, we might want to offer a few more options for shade. Um, but I think, I mean, 
I love the fact that this is outside. So that's super cool. Yeah, something that I liked that some of the other subscribers did is they would find a way to connect one side of the cage to the other. So whether it was like a, a natural rope perch being woven around or like a really long natural perch, I would love to see some perching going across that's kind of interesting for your bird to make it across versus having to climb so much in this. I would love to see maybe more utilization of the perching and where you're putting the perching because I think that front low one could act as a station perch, but it also seems so low that I'm not sure how much it actually gets utilized. Yeah. Um, cage material, you know, again, it looks powder coated, doesn't look like it's rusting or chipping. So that looks good. Perching stuff, there's, there's, let's see, we got a natural perch. We have the one for the bottom, which I do like. Um, I like it. I'm just not sure how much it gets utilized down there. Yeah. It might even be better used hanging from the top. So we took we took some of our older Java trees that had been outside in the weather for years, and they weren't moldy, but they were not. They're a little bit more on the brittle side, and so we hung them from the roof, uh, from the the, the cage top. Um, and so there's like this kind of sideways tree, and it's so cool. It's it really looks cool. so cool. Yeah, the and birds, it gets a lot of use. The birds love it. Um, so super cool. I also see that you have one of those little cuddle bones in here. It looks like maybe mm -hmm. right there by the dish. Is that a cuddle bone? I will say a really cool trick that Patty taught me is grating those cuddle bones down and adding it to your bird's food is a great way to actually get them to utilize the cuddle bone if they aren't otherwise. So I haven't really seen them offered to medium and large birds. Uh, but yeah, just a, just a thought. I also see that bell the toy, blue that's bell the toy. plastic bell toy. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if that's a foraging toy I that they it, pull down and something comes through. Something? But if it's not a foraging toy, I would probably recommend taking that out because in my experience, giving indestructible toys to especially medium and large birds, they learn to thrash them and it ends up being redirected aggression and we really don't want that. If you saw our collaboration with Tyler Ruggie, his macaw had all these different toys that it would utilize in negative ways. And once we replaced those with destructible toys, this bird became a lot more interactive, not only with its environment, but also with its people. And I think that that is really important to uh, to give birds to do. But I do love the use of some of the acrylic foraging toys that I see. I, I think was going to say, from, the clear one on the back is a great one. Yeah, I think those are from Creative Foraging Systems. They have some really cool designs. So then I, I'm not sure if these are, what are, are these perches that have been covered in like vet wrap? Can't tell, there's some, something going on with the pink stuff. It looks like intestine. <laughs> I can't tell what it is. <laughs> it looks like almost rope covered in vet wrap, but I don't know. Yeah, so we can't tell there. I think personally, I'd like to see a little more perching options. Yeah. Um, I think where the perches are utilized is not being optimized for the bird's use. Yeah, so there's one on the, the bowl on the right. Uh, it looks like, I don't see the perch, but actually I see part of the perch on the left bowl. So there's a perch on each side there. And then, yeah, just that one coming up from the bottom, I agree. I don't know how much it's getting used. Yeah, I don't think it's getting used, which I think is why you see the bird on the side. So again, like perching, just adding stuff that goes the full length, full across, just bigger, larger, more natural perching, I think will encourage this bird to have to climb around less on the bars and actually utilize the indoor space. But yeah, very cool. Good to see your bird outside. So next we have an anonymous submission. So this looks really cool. I love that it's divided because you can take that divider right out. I can't tell if the divider's in or out. It kind of looks in. Does it look in or out to you? I don't think it is. This looks like an empty space to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, something interesting is they put a perch on this door, but then when you open the door, the perch is like straight up. So, so I don't know about that. It's you just um, station the bird there, and then you just open yeah. it really quickly. <laughs> and it's perfect. It'll all happen again and again and again. So yeah, I think something that might be really cool because they don't have the divider in there is taking this natural rope perch that's on the right. That's a uh, gosh, what do they call that? Is that a natural one or is it a colorful one? It's just backlit, so we can't tell. I don't know. The other one's definitely colorful. 
boing, that's what it's called. So the boing, I almost wonder if taking that and connecting it from one side of the cage to the opposite side of the cage would be a cooler dynamic of it would make it fairly tight around, but also like some variety and getting around this cage. Because when we look at this cage, I think what the bird has to do is climb around the actual cage to get around versus utilizing what you've given it to get around the cage. And I think that that might be really nice to just kind of offer that. We had a large cage at one point that had a long wooden, uh, perch going the full length of it, but then I wrapped natural rope around it and it just offered some like cool variety for their feet. So I really like the idea of stretching like one side to the other, so to speak. So I love the size of this cage. We don't necessarily know what species it's for. Well, based on the bar spacing, I would say this is probably for a macaw, which if that's the case, the, I 100% agree it needs more perching horizontally, but lots of toys and that's awesome from what I can tell. I like that there's part of this cage, again, assuming there's no divider in there, the bird has the opportunity to be in front of the window or not directly in front of the window. So if you have a bird who is, well, we had a client with an African gray that she had outside and a hawk took the gray off of her shoulder and the gray survived somehow, but then she never, never let the bird outside again. But to get it close to outside, she put the bird in the cage in front of the window. And this poor bird was terrified that that hawk was coming back every day because it was it couldn't get away from the window, where this offers the opportunity to, to get away from the window if it wants to. And so, um, you know, obviously in that story, the, the owner had all the best intentions of like, hey, I wanna keep you safe. Here's as close to outside as you can get without realizing what could be going on in the bird's brain. And of course, we'll never know. But I love that this offers that variety of being able to get directly in front of the window or not, just so that the bird feels a little bit more safe and secure. Yeah, and I would probably say that cages like this, and especially birds of that size, it's really great to be able to have them station to a perch. And typically we do that on the door, like the main door of the perch. So I would love to see that perch that's added to the top like window door for that to be moved off of there to the main door so that you can station your bird and have it come in and out that way. I still like the utilization of those things that, that come down and stuff as another option, but I wouldn't necessarily have a perch on them just because when you do open them, and especially if you have them open a lot, now that perch is kind of rendered useless. So I would probably move the, that perching to different parts, whether it's those like in that corner area, to the sides, to the back sides. Um, I think you have a lot of options here. So I could see a lot more perching going full length. And if you guys are wondering where to get like full length long perches, we do a lot of ribbon wood perches from customcages.com. So you can just search in perches, I think there, and you can select the size. And that's something that I really enjoy product wise from them. But cage size wise, this is awesome. I mean, what a great enclosure for a bird that isn't in an outdoor aviary. Although maybe it is, and that's why it's not in the shot. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think another thing that you could do here is utilize the outside of the cage as well and putting some perching around there, different things that you can do with target training and making handling a little bit easier so that when your bird comes out, it's not just naturally going to the top of the cage to avoid you, but it's actually coming out to a station to make it easier to be handled by you. So I think looking at the outside of it would be really cool. And once you add more perching to this, I think you could add more toys. Cause I actually look at this and go like, oh, there's not that much going on in there. And I think adding toy bundles at each point where there are those perches would be something that would be super cool. Yeah, we wanna know what your thoughts are. So if you wanna dive down into the comments and let us know what you think is amazing and maybe what somebody could do to make an improvement on this cage. I think that's uh, gonna be really helpful to just have that community involvement in this. And so if you're willing to do it, it, uh, it goes a long way for us being able to reach more people and help more birds. Yeah, I want it to be like a helpful community of resources in the comments for sure. So giving constructive feedback is always really, really awesome. One thing I did notice is that there isn't access to the grate. It looks like straight access to paper, which mm -hmm. we have talked about in other videos where birds can just tend to get a little hormonal when they have that direct access, but it all depends. It's bird dependent, right? Our birds don't spend a lot of time at the bottom of their enclosures indoors. So maybe that's the case for this bird too. And if this enclosure is for two separate macaws, I would highly encourage whoever submitted this to modify that middle dividing panel 
so that there's no way the birds can eat each other's toes. Toe injuries are huge in captivity and we just wanna make sure that we can do everything we can to avoid having that happen. So uh, it might be that you have to go have a custom new panel made and powder coated um, or a stainless steel one would be even more ideal, but something that's either like on our, our new aviaries, we have basically one by one mesh on, mesh on both sides of a one inch piece of tubing. So there's a one inch gap in the middle and a one inch mesh on each side and it's really difficult for them to like accidentally get a toe bitten. I mean, it would have to be... It's, it would have to be a bird being like, how can I wedge my yeah, toe for you to eat it? And at that point, <laughs> just Don't saying. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I would encourage you to take a look at this and see what you can do if, again, if you had two birds in this cage to make it so that toes were less likely to be bitten. But uh, otherwise, I, I like this cage. It's a nice size and I think it would uh, be great for, for any bird that can't stick its head out through those bars. <laughs> So if you guys are watching this series going, I want to submit mine, I missed the memo, go ahead, there's still time. You can submit yours for a review at info at birdtricks.com and you might just find yourself here on the YouTube channel.